we're going to go to the um, just got a couple of words about the uh, creating and designing your self-promotional brochures and blogs. Okay, I can't stress enough uh, being organized. I can't stress enough. The more organized you are, um, the better it's going to be for everybody, especially as far as keeping the stress level down. Uh, I've got to check one thing on my preferences. Yeah, I'm good. Testing one, two, three. All right. So as far as the steps, I suggest you create a folder on your whatever computer you use. And you've already done this. You know about this. But you need to create folders and organize those folders into categories of commercial photography, photojournalism, portfolio one, fine art, portrait, artist statement, every thing we're going to be doing now and in portfolio two, you should have a folder and everything that relates to commercial photography in uh, Mr. Taylor's class, then you will put in that folder. Everything you did for Kathy in portfolio one should be, if you don't have it scanned, it's going to have to be scanned and put into that folder. Everything for um, uh, documentary should be in a folder, okay? Uh, secondly, keep in mind that the self-promotional and the fact that you're all going to be printing in the summer, printing your portfolios, don't make the mistakes some students have done in the past, and that is to save over their master images and make them 72 DPI and lose their 300 DPI images because that is a nightmare to have to go back. Thank you, Kathy. I, I was so close. Uh, that is a nightmare and um, because I had a student at the end of Portfolio 2 getting ready to print her portfolio and she realized she cop she saved over every image she took the second year of the program when she was posting them to Blackboard and she didn't make a second copy she made them all 72 DPI she had a breakdown she had to reshoot so much stuff because she can't print that stuff so be very diligent and careful as you make your work your pictures for the web and differentiate between your pictures for printing and your self-promotional, okay? That's an important point. So being organized with a good file management system. Does anybody know what that's called in photography? We call that starts with workflow. Absolutely. A really good workflow is going to make your life easier. All right, so with that said, I'm going to go and get my other. Kathy gave me the, Kathy, the, the, the password is Mac. If you want to try to get in and see the, 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 it's up to you, but it is Mac if you want to try to navigate that uh, while I'm moving forward. Okay, so let's go to the um, steps. to follow. All right. Step one. Um, let me go through the 10 steps first. Then you're going to go back. Those of you that didn't set up the account can set up the account. Those of that you did that can move forward a little quicker. Uh, so step one, we're going to use what's called WordPress.com. Uh, and let me tell you the reason why I have used WordPress over the years. WordPress, in my opinion, is the best blog engine out there. Not only is it the best blog engine, but you're, what I like about it, it enables you to make your site look like a very sophisticated website. A very sophisticated, for free, without any uh, advertisements on it at all. 
They also give you two gigabytes of free space. That's a lot. In fact, I've been blogging since 2006, and I haven't filled up my two gigs yet. And I blog a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm, Yes, you can buy more. You can, you can set up. In fact, I'm going to show you how to set up your own domain name. For $18, you could have jerry.com, jerrycleckley.com, or jerrysportfolio.com. 18 a year. A year. And for $99, you can get all kinds of extra bells and whistles with type fonts and colors and banners and all that good stuff. But I use the basic site. And it meets my meets my my needs. So we're going to create the WordPress account. Uh, and again, all of this is on your Moodle page, so you can go back and refer to this. This is on your Moodle page. Number two, you're going to give your web blog a name. This is essentially going to be your marketing tool. It's going to be how you market yourself. Now, some of you might have your own websites with other uh, types of uh, WebEx or, or other web uh, environments. Uh, I'm going to ask that you do you follow you do the the WordPress for the class, okay? Because it's going to be a great way to help you get all your work organized and in one place. So, number two, you're going to give your, your, your website a name, and you can call it, uh, uh, you could call it uh, Photography Portfolio, you could call it Diversified Portfolio, you could give it, you know, put your name up there and then have My Diversified Portfolio or My Portfolio. You can be creative with that, okay? Uh, and you're going to create um, a subtitle. So it would be a name and then a subtitle. And I have screenshots here that shows you where to go to do that. Step three, once you have your blog and template, you're going to pick a theme. Now, there are many, many themes. There's probably 100 themes, a design. Some of them cost money but many of them don't. I suggest just finding one that's free, that you like, okay? And there are certain themes that are very conducive for photography. There are photo themes specifically for photography. So you want to find a theme, number one, that is conducive for pictures, and number two, that allows you to upload your own header. A header is a banner. Most of them do, but it'll say uh, you can. It'll say in the theme uh, you can add a header to it because you want to put your own banner in there. Step four: you're going to uh, post a welcome message to the front page. My name is, and this is my web portfolio in progress. I look forward to getting all my best work up on this site and sharing my love of photography with everyone who comes by and visits, something like that, while you're building it. Because it's going to take you a couple of months to get this really, really looking awesome. So if you look at my, uh, the top of mine, there's the title of mine, Keo Blog. And this is just a screenshot, but these are my pages. Black and white, creative seeing in Ireland, Ireland workshop, my photo gallery, my stories, my bio, plastic camera pictures, and my art. So you're going to have different um, pages. You're going to have commercial, documentary, portfolio one, digital, fine art, things like that. Now, one of the most important things distinctions that you've got to know about and so many people get confused and that is to learn the difference between a post and a page a post and a page so you can click I have a hyperlink on there in the lecture I have a hyperlink in the lecture that states uh, Create your pages. Pages are not posts. Read this link to learn the difference. P 
pages are separate links that will take the the person going to your website to your commercial photography to your documentary they're static in other words you they're they're what I have at the very top these are pages posts are an ongoing uh, uh, essays or announcements on the main page so let me click on that um, okay let me read you the difference posts are entries listed in reversed chronological order on the blog home page if you have created any sticky posts those will appear before other posts so posts are on the main page in chronological order reverse chronological order pages are static pages are static and are not listed by date pages do not use tags or categories and I'm going to teach you about tags the beautiful thing another beautiful thing about WordPress is you if you tag your work properly you can get it to be posted on Google searches so if you're having a show Jessica you've got a big uh, painting exhibit and you're going to post some new paintings up on your blog underneath the the my art link you can put in a tags that when someone looks up art exhibitions your blog will pop right up that's what's really neat one of the great things I love about it when I do a new post I always put tags in and I normally get a hundred to two hundred visitors within that day because people are if they're looking up um, European photography when I was traveling through Europe and I was doing some work over there I would do a post put in the tags and anybody that's searching European photography or uh, photography in um, Hungary whatever my blog would pop right up yes Jerry yes 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 okay pages are static uh, and, and about page is a classic example so you'll have a page about yourself you're gonna have a page for your artist statement or your career statement uh, you'll have a page for your resume you'll have a page for your commercial photography because you're all doing commercial layouts correct so you're gonna have a page where people can go and look at them you will have a page for documentary you'll have a page for, uh, for portfolio one Yes, Jessica. Uh, well, here's the thing. You're going to be asked to put in certain pages, but that's not to say you can't have more so I want you to have the commercial photography page I want you to have the portrait page because that corresponds with the classes you took in the program but you might very well have my paintings or my favorite photographs or my cell phone pictures I don't care as long as you have the minimum links with the appropriate pictures from the class if you remember in portrait class you had to do an environmental portrait you had to do a character study okay those are there are certain portraits that have to be in the final portfolio and you want those to also be on your website does that answer your question great great okay um, so I have it broken down on step five create your pages pages are not posts so pages should be the following commercial photography documentary photojournalism portfolio one fashion digital now if you can if you have a lot of really good fashion pictures you can have a separate page if you don't just put it in with the portrait page okay depending upon you know how much fashion you shot digital images what would that be that would be like 
restorations, composites, colorizations, and you're going to do more of that in the summer. Uh, you probably have some from the digital photography class. You're going to build on that. Uh, portrait, fine art, meaning, you know, if you love taking pictures of flowers, some of your best flower pictures. If you like taking pictures of old, decrepit buildings, you know, those type of things. Designs in nature, nature, landscapes. Travel photography. Uh, you will also need a page for the artist career statement and the resume. Step six, once you have created your pages, you need to start, and this will be probably the hardest thing that you'll be learning, and that is uploading your pictures to your pages. Make sure you have put the copyright metadata in your images first. Do you all know how to do that? Under course in uh, under file info, your name, copyright, right? You all know how to do that. Very good. I'm sure you learned that early on. Um, I give you an approxim approximation. Uh, it's ballpark, but basically you want your images for the website to be approximately 1,000 pixels wide or high, depending upon the orientation and 72 PPI. Step seven, you can upload your images as thumbnails, slideshow, or large format, and then stack them. I suggest thumbnails or slideshow. WordPress, uh, and let me just preface this right now. Just like Google, WordPress pretty often updates and changes things a little bit so one day you you're putting pictures in one way and all of a sudden it changes and it's a little different so don't panic they used to have a really easy way to do slideshows and now the slideshow is a little bit more complicated but you still can do it so we'll be going over that as well and I'll show you some examples uh, Please note that the web portfolio will not be finished in the graphics class. Okay. Um, you will be adding it through the summer class. So we're going to get you as far as we can get you by May 10th or May 8th, whenever this class ends. I'll get you as far as I can get you. And then Mr. Taylor will pick it back up. And as you're creating new work in the summer, you'll just basically be adding to it. You're going to have the whole thing built. All you're going to have to do is add to it. Here's an example of a banner. This is my uh, screenshot of my blog. Uh, create a unique banner for your web portfolio by going to the dashboard, appearance, and header. Then follow the directions for the header and set the size in Photoshop, which will be approximately 1100 by 200 pixels. So you're going to have to fix that, make a banner in Photoshop. You might have a, like, maybe you'll have a little contact sheet strip of eight of your pictures. You know, it might be a self-portrait. It might be just a favorite photo. But you're going to have a banner. Uh, so I've got my name, and then my subtitle is Thoughts on Life, Art, Photography, Technology, Teaching, and Travels. And there's my banner. And I just, I'm doing a new series on my blog about graduates of the photo program. I just did one on a 2005 uh, graduate. And that's the latest post. So that would be a post. Step 10, once you have the basic blog template with pages and a header, just add photos with captions to the appropriate pages. Step 11, add widgets to the side of your blog. These can be links to other websites, calendar, contact information, recent comments. It'll, it'll let you put in a Twitter feed, a Flickr feed, a, a Facebook link, uh, blog statistics. All those things can be put into your blog. It's very sophisticated. Every time I post a new blog, I click my Twitter feed, and it goes out on my Twitter. And it also goes directly to my Facebook page. So I can hit three social networks, bam, 
just from hitting my my buttons on my blog think about how you can market yourself like that Jerry say you're starting a photo business in the New Bern area and you're doing uh, just for the sake of argument uh, children photography or uh, you're doing informal portraits you could be posting this weekend I have a special on my children portraits we're going to go out to the park and we're going to work from one to three uh, you have a little uh, here are going to be my prices meet me here and then bam you hit it on Twitter you hit it on Facebook it goes all over and people who are following you I have almost 200 subscribers can know immediately that hey Jerry's going to be out shooting let's bring the kids see what I'm saying it's a great marketing tool great marketing tool uh, the web portfolio this is a key point so lock this down the web portfolio must match your print diversified portfolio by the last week of the summer semester so in other words your final diversified portfolio should be matched from the print everything you have in your print portfolio should be up on your web portfolio in the appropriate categories ie pages okay so um, number one we create the WordPress account number two you're gonna give it a name number three you're gonna pick a theme number four you're gonna make a welcome message to let people know this is a work in progress number five you're gonna set up your pages because those will be separate links number six you're gonna put in your start putting in your pictures number seven you're gonna decide if they're gonna be thumbnail slideshow or large format uh, I recommend thumbnail or slideshow then you're going to organize all your work into separate folders. Uh, you know what your categories are. Create a banner and add your widgets. Okay. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? Um, yes. I do not recall what a uh, I'm going to explain that. Don't worry. Okay, I will show you in a moment. Let me get back to my Now you're going to need a widget license which you'll have to get at the I'm only kidding. <laughs> you don't need a widget license. That was my silly thing for the day. Okay, no widget licenses uh, are needed. Um, now let me go to I set up a demo blog. All right, that is a demo blog. And it's basically what it looks like after I just after I just put in the uh, the information that they asked me to do. So how many of you have your WordPress template made? okay well let me go ahead and take you through the steps and then um, when we get to a point where you can start doing hands-on we'll do that so let me just go ahead and uh, back up one one moment okay so you're gonna go to wordpress.com if you haven't already and you are going to Let me go back to screen share. You're going to go to WordPress and you're going to click the Get Started button. You're going to click the Get Started button. You all see that? And you're going to follow the prompts. My advice to you is this as you follow the prompts, do not use your school email, use your personal email. The reason being that the college's firewall 
will throw that uh, activation email into the junk mail and you might not find it. Or it might take a while to get to you. So use your personal email. All right? So this is what's going to happen if you'll just follow me up on the screen. When you click Get Started, you're going to put in your name. You're going to give the website a name. You're going to put in your email address. You're going to put in a password. Once you do that and you click, and, and it, it's happy with your password, um, because a lot of times it, other people will have that password. You've got to keep doing it until you get one that nobody has. This is what you're going to get which is basically nothing. It's just an empty, it's just an empty page. So let me take you through. All right. So let's kind of do what we just did conceptually. Let's go ahead and do uh, at the blog itself. Okay, so if you'll just watch the screen, I'm just going to show you the key places that you need to be going to. Okay, because this is what it's going to look like. This is just a blank template. It's it's you got to build it now. You're going to have to build it. So if you would just watch the screen and let me show you a couple of key things. Remember, I said that there's many many functions to the WordPress. Don't panic when you see like tons of functions and apps and don't worry about it. I'm going to show you the ones that you need to be aware of. So, number one, number one, you need to know about the dashboard. Can you all see the dashboard up there? Up at the top left, the dashboard. Can, is it coming up on that? Yeah, it is. Okay. So the dashboard. When I click the dashboard, let me go ahead and I'm going to set it up like I would have you set it up. Okay? So the first thing I want to do, on your very left are, are icons for all the different functions. Okay? So where do I need to go? I'm in the dashboard. I need to go to the very bottom where it says settings. Do you see that? settings and I'm going to hit general and I'm going to put in the site the site title so you would put in uh, you would put in your name or you could put Jerry's photo portfolio or Jessica's web portfolio whatever you want it to be and I want you to put in a subtitle All right, so I just put in the subtitle. You can also upload a icon that re that is a um, uh, avatar for your for your site. So you can put in a picture of you. You can put in a graphic. You can put in a camera, but you can upload a an image for an avatar. Once you've done that, you just scroll down and hit Save Changes. Now when I go to the top, if you'll notice, now it says steps for creating a web portfolio. I changed that from a, Word, uh, a WordPress. It just said something like this is a WordPress blog. I just changed that. Now, let's talk about the difference between pages and posts. We said that a post is basically always going to be on the main page and it's going to scroll down reverse chrono uh, chronological so I'm going to go ahead and get, click get started here and I'm going to put um, to my photo
what I'm doing is making a nice little um, welcome. Okay, now I can get even, I can get fancy. I can go to Google, uh, I can get fancy, and I can go get a, a picture. And let me get a welcome, um, let me get a camera. You can get nice and... Uh, Why isn't it not a? I tell you what, I'm out of time. Hmm. All right, just just for just to be just to be fun, let me get this image right here. I'm going to hit full size, and and I'm going to grab the URL to that picture. I just grabbed the URL to that picture, and I'm going to put it. I'm just being silly, just having fun. I want my blog, to, my website, to look really fun. Add media, add media, and here it says insert from URL. Insert from URL. So I'm going to paste that URL in there and insert it, and it's way too big. So all I have to do is click on it and make it small. All right, and I'm going to hit uh, publish. And now it's telling me, whoa, you published your first post. That was a post, not a page. Got to know the difference. And look, Joe, look at on the left. Every time you make a post, I want you to notice on the left, I can immediately click Twitter and Facebook and pop my latest post. I just got back from a NASCAR. I got some amazing photographs. I want to share them. Um, I got a whole portfolio of NASCAR pictures. Bam, Facebook, Twitter. Everything's out. It's all tagged and out there. Okay. And what you really want to do is start. I'm going to give you some tips. But the best way to get people going to your site is to go to other photo sites and click like buttons on the ones you like. And they'll go back to yours and click your like button. And next thing you know, you've got a whole community of people checking you out. Like it. Like it. Yeah. All right. So now let's see what. Now look. See how it's beginning to, now I got my post, right? Okay, so that's my first post, but I don't have any widgets. I'm widgetless, and I don't really have any pages yet, okay? So um, here is my home page about. Now. About is what, Jerry? Is it a post or a page? It's a page, exactly. So I need to change this because this is just telling me it's an example of a page. So I need to, this is where I would put my artist statement. And this is where I would put a little bit about me in here. So what would I do? I would have to, um, I would have to edit this, right? I would edit this. And I would get rid of this. And I would put, um, I have been a photo student at CCC since 2000 and 2011, and look forward to this. Okay, yada, 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 okay? And then, of course, I can have a little picture, a little picture in here. Uh, and then I would uh, update that. Now I've got 
Okay. So, if you follow my 10, 11 steps, that's what I want you to do. This is not rocket science, and there's no need to reinvent the wheel. I've taken it, broken it down step by step. If you just have your two web pages open on your computer, one to my steps, two to your blog, and just go, okay, step two, what do I need to do? I need to go to the dashboard, and I need to create my pages, right? These kind of things. So let's go ahead. As we're following through the steps, um, I'm going to go ahead and now back to the dashboard. Here demo. Now I'm going to take you to all right. I'm going to take you to mine for a moment and all right, so I am using a, let me go to the dashboard, theme, okay? Next thing is the theme, right? So we want to go to appearance on the left, themes, appearance, themes. And you're going to pick a theme that you really connect with visually. A theme that is also conducive for pictures. There are some themes that are a little more conducive for text. So let me show you. I'm going to change the theme on my website. Okay? Uh, before I do, let me just go back to the Keo blog. All right. So let me show you one of my pages. Let me go to black and white. All right? Everybody will watch up on the screen here. I'm going to go to black and white. Let me click black and white. There's a big picture. Now I have, and you know what, what else is really cool? I can link to Photo Bucket. I can create slideshows in other, in Flickr, and link them right in. So for example, I have two slideshows. See, now there's a slideshow of black and white. Andy, <laughs> long time ago. But look, if I click here, watch what's going to happen. It's going to take me to Photo Bucket because I have galleries all through Photo Bucket. So I, I, I can go to Photo Bucket right in within the blog. So say you've already got tons of pictures in Photo Bucket or Flickr. You can interface and link right into them if you choose to. All right. So this is a page. Let's go to Plastic Camera. So here is a slideshow. And then... I have thumbnails, so if you choose to do thumbnails, I have captions under each one, but watch what happens when I click on the thumbnail. You see? Isn't that neat? So you've got the thumbnails, and then it goes right to like a little click, or, click across slideshow. So I don't want to be so structured where I inhibit your creative freedom. I just want to give you enough structure where you, you have a viable uh, portfolio web presence. But I want you to have the freedom to, to try different ways of, of, of showcasing your pictures.
What's that? Uh, as far as no, you just get the free. You're talking about the themes. Just get the free one. So uh, I'm just going through the pages. We're going to go back to the themes in a minute. Um, here's my bio page, and at the bottom of my bio page, I have links to my uh, Ireland photographs, my travel journals, uh, a book, one of the books that I wrote, that type of thing. That I can you can download PDFs. So your resumes can be uploaded. This summer you'll be doing resumes. So these are pages. So what are you going to have at the top of yours? You're going to have commercial photography. You're going to have documentary. You're going to have photojournalism, digital imagery or images, uh, portfolio one, my resume or my artist statement or artist statement, okay, fine art, photographs. See, that's what your pages are going to be, okay? All right, let's go to theme. Let's go to dashboard. What I love about the dashboard is it gives me stats. Like March 24th, I had 400 hits. It, it, it just depends on how I tag it. And I can get a lot of hits for certain things. Um, shows all my people that are posting to me and people that are checking out my, my, my website. But what I want to do is go to Appearance, Themes. So the theme that I have is called Ideation and Intent. It is free. So you want to make sure you can put a header on there. So let's go down, and let me just change the theme. What's really cool is you can change. Uh, if you have got a lot of content in your website, it'll, within seconds, completely reconfigure it and make it look awesome. I mean, it does it within seconds. So watch how fast it'll reconfigure my website when I pick another. Th There's even a theme called Photographer, but that one's uh, $69. There's one $150. But you see, there's free ones. You want to go to the free ones. So I'm going to go to, all right, I'm going to go to Hero. And what do I want to do? I don't want to activate it. I just want to look and see what my website will look like using it. So I'm going to click a live preview. And it just changed my blog completely. You see? It's got a little picture of me. See, it's got my pages. This time, uh, pages are at the top, but they're also on the side. Everybody on the right side are my widgets. So people can subscribe. Here's my Twitter feed. Here's my Flickr photos. Here's the recent comments, my interests, my posts, the people I follow, my stats, and a little calendar. All right? So I don't like that. I mean, it doesn't do anything for me. So I'm going to get out of it. Let's try another one that's free, um, that looks more photography. All right, I'm going to do this one. It's called Acad Academica. Uh, it's not, you know, it's a little bit more straightforward. It's not my style. But you can see how easy it is to change your theme. So you want to find a theme. I'll do one more. There's a camera, live preview. But it literally repackages, it literally repackages my site like that. If you like it, you click save and activate. If you like it, at the bottom right, you click save and activate. And then you begin putting in your content. Okay, questions about themes. Everybody get the, look at look at them all. There's just hundreds of them. Hundreds of them. And many of them are free. If you're feeling like you got a lot of extra money to spend, you can go ahead and buy one. You're tearing it up. If you want to spend money on one, that you know, that's your choice. I like I'll tell you a really good one. 
Mix Folio is a very good photography blog. And it's free. It's called Mix Folio. See that? It's a very nice one. It's one that I think would be conducive for the class. Each one of these is a post, and each one of these is a page. So this is one you might want to consider. Okay. All right. So um, the next thing, once you pick your theme, the next thing you want to do is to go and under the dashboard, you will see pages. Do you see that? That's how you set up your pages. So I would click page, and I would add a new page, and it would be what? Commercial photography, documentary, fine art, digital images, portfolio one. Okay, so the pages are going to be separate links on the blog, separate links. And you need to just do the ones that I typed up on that Moodle page for you. All right, so you know the difference between pages and posts. You know about themes. You know about setting up your title. And as far as putting up your header, all you have to do is go to header under appearance, and you also see widgets, widgets and headers. Let's look at header. You know what's really cool is you can have six or eight, ten different headers that constantly change. So every time you go to the site, it's a different header. So I'm, it rotates. It'll rotate. Header is under appearance. And you would browse, and you would upload a banner. But you have to make your banner in Photoshop because it needs to be a certain size or else it's going to crop the living dickens out of it. Okay, so header, you can upload a header. I've got a variety of headers there from different places. All right? Somebody's having fun over there. Very good. Very good. Okay. So um, everybody knows the difference between a post and a page. You know about your headers. Let's look at widgets. There are tons of widgets. Tons of widgets. And you choose the ones you want. For example, I have one called Image where I can have a picture of myself with my uh, information, my, web, my, my email address, my Skype address. Uh, you can put that up there. Uh, you can have an email subscription. You can have a Twitter feed, Flickr, Facebook, recent comments, calendar, category cloud, Facebook light box, like box, um, contact information, gravatars, uh, pages, recent posts, search button, a tag cloud. My advice right now is less is more. You don't need a whole lot. I would have a contact pay, a contact thing. If you've got Twitter, I would put my Twitter in there. I would put my Facebook box in there, uh, those type of things. And then I'd build on it. Then I would build on it. So the dashboard is your control panel. The dashboard is where everything is. It's, it tells me and it gives me all my information. I have 387 posts, 1,568 comments, nine pages. Uh, it's got a great spam filter. I mean, I get almost zero spam. If someone comments, if it's like, hey, uh, you know, I'm trying to sell you uh, uh, Rogaine for hair loss, it, it gets pulled immediately. Uh, it allows you to do drafts. Um, you 
can put links in. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go back to the web demo. All right. And the last thing I need to show you is how to put an image in a page or a post. It's always the same. No matter if it's a page or a post, putting a picture in is the, very easy, but I will take you through it. So we are going to go to the dashboard, and I'm going to make a new page. Dashboard, new page, not post, page. Why? This is going to be a separate static link to another body of work, to another portfolio. Okay? Page. And I'm going to call this travel because I just came back from some travels and I know I've got lots of travel pictures. My travels. Actually, I'm going to call it El Salvador. All right. Um, this is a uh, series of photographs I took during my last visit to El Salvador. All right. Now, does everybody see the Add Media button up here? You all see that? Okay, so I'm going to go to Add Media, and we're going to start creating galleries. And what I re what's really neat about this, as a sidebar, your blog becomes a repository of all your best work. Because you always, every picture you put in the blog has a URL. So say you're on Facebook and you want to show a picture, you can just go to your blog, grab the URL, and pop it in. And that'll take them to, the, to your website as well. Okay, uh, Jessica, for example, you just made a new painting. I, I do this. When I'm done with a new painting or mixed media, I put it up on my blog, and then I take the URL to the picture, and I put it up on uh, Facebook. I say, hey, I, this is my latest painting, and people will click on it, and it will go right to my blog. See? All right, so hit Add Media. All right, now, Create Gallery. Set featured image, or if I'm pulling pictures from Photo Bucket, for example, or from the web, like I did with the uh, uh, the picture of the camera obscura, I would use insert a URL. But what am I going to do? I'm going to upload files. So I'm going to hit select files. Now, let me just stay on this for one moment, please. You can literally say, um, uh, Caitlin, say you've got a folder of 10 documentary pictures in one folder, and you've already set them all up. You've already, they're all ready to go. You can literally drag all 10 in automatically, and it'll upload 10, 20 pictures at a time. You don't have to do one at a time. But I'm going to do one at a time first. And I'm going to go to my travel folder, travels. And I'm going to go, so this is just like you're going to do. This is my workflow. I've got um, El Salvador, Europe, Greenville. When I click on Europe, what do I have? Amsterdam, Berlin, Bratislava, okay? Uh, Greenville, Guatemala, Ireland, Long Island. So I've got everything broken down, right? i got everything broken down, but we want to go to El Salvador. And I can do one of two things. I can go like this with my shift key, and I can go bam, bam, bam. See, I can click a whole series and hit boom, and they all go right into my media gallery in my blog page. You see that? Now, this is something we want to be aware of. I want you to put captions on your pictures. So even if you put in 10 at a time, you still need to click on one at a time and put in boat ride in San Marcos. And I want you also to no notice that 
it gives me the option to look at the top right a thumbnail medium large full don't use full it's too big use large or thumbnail large medium or thumbnail so we're going to just put some pictures in and then we'll then we'll then we'll problem solve the the slideshow thing yes yeah uh, so because if they weren't they would have taken a lot longer okay so then I got that one then I so I'm gonna hit um, I'm gonna hit large then I'm gonna click this one and this guy was banana oh, one of my favorite I stumbled upon this picture and I'm just so tickled with it this guy just in the dark will look we're looking over his bananas banana uh, watcher and of course leave it to me to find a Bavarian German pub in Guatemala <laughs> German pub in Antigua all right you get the idea and you put your captions in under caption and I'm gonna hit insert into page so these are all thumbnails right actually they're mediums they're mediums I'm gonna now I suggest you save your draft don't publish it until you get it right till you're happy with it let's see what it looks like you click on it and you get it gets big because you can click on every picture I don't you love my banana guy I was walking down the road after a, a, a festival it was nighttime but there was this bright uh, light bulb in the middle of this like little old cement building and I see the guy out of the corner of my eye and I knew that, I mean, it was really dark, and I didn't have a tripod. So I snuck up on him, and I put my arm against the door jam, and I just held my breath and went, Shh. it was like a half a second. I got three shots off before he turned around. But, I mean, I'm just so tickled with that shot with the bananas and the, the light on his hat. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was just like those bananas just blew me away, that he was just standing there guarding the bananas you know that's what uh, I'm walking oh, oh, this I keep forgetting I'm previewed so many pictures to be taken when you travel I just walking by this store and I just saw that I said that is so cool with all the posters So, and then that would be, uh, the bottom one would be larger. And that's what the large size would look like. That's a place called San Marcos in the middle of a volcano lake. It's, it's, it's the closest I've ever found to paradise, and I did not want to leave. And what was so weird about San Marcos, when I stepped off those little boats, we got to this tiny little village it was all Europeans from like all over but no almost no locals it was all Europeans okay so see it's got the caption underneath banana watcher German pub in Antigua all right so remember if you're making a drafts pages let's go back to the ad media and I can click through each one of these and I can that was large and I can change that to, to medium I can change that to medium or I can change them all to thumbnail All right. 
So I want you all in the next, um, I think you've got enough information to be dangerous. I'm trying to find the um, slideshow setting. I've got a screenshot on it. I got to go to my screenshot. Let me go back to uh, no. I, I know where it is. It's just it, it's it, they they hit it. They hit it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and publish that just so you can see what the page looks like. And let's go to the demo blog. Now, what what did you notice now about your main page in my blog now? What just happened? I have a new page, right? I have a new page. So you guys are going to have all of your categories at the top of your blog based on you know the theme that you pick. We have, we have plenty of time to do this. I don't want you to rush it. I want you to be deliberate. I want you to think about it. I want you to be... Uh, creative and and plan it because this is going to be one of your primary marketing tools you're going to graduate with a lot of pictures print form uh, we want you to have a good strong web presence as well okay let me go back to uh, Screen share and go to got to get to Moodle. Okay, we're getting uh, getting there, getting to the end here. Just want to run over a couple more things with you. All right, um, so let me show you your resources that you've got available to you on the website. Let's see what let's see what we've got. Everybody's pretty much squared away now. We're starting from scratch. Everybody's doing great in the class. All we got to do is two more things. Um, so, self promotional brochure assignment description. Okay, let me take you to. Uh, a former student's blog. All right, let me take you to a former student's blog. Her name was Rachel, and I want you to notice. Let me. I got to zoom. Zoom back in. Actually, zoom out. Okay, so Rachel is still pretty much uh, using, she graduated probably three years ago. She still uses her blog, which I'm tickled about. Um, her last post, post was March 13th. So these are her posts. She does a lot of environmental portraits, nature photography. She does a lot of military stuff. So these are her these this is these are her posts talking about her photography Christmas she does a lot of welcome uh, home with the with the troops it's one of her specialties all right so that's her posts let's look at her commercial let's look at her commercial All right, Jerry, how did she choose to showcase her commercial using thumbnails? So when I click on that,
I, I thought these were some nice little commercial layouts. So this is how she did her, her layouts in the thumbnail. So that's a good option because I, I think this is very clean. Yes. As long as you put a, a, a little disclaimer that this is a classroom exercise. You could put that in the metadata. In other words, this is not for sale. This is just part of my class work. Now, if you were to go and do a layout for Belks and you got paid and you took that, that's fine. But this is just, you could put in the metadata school portfolio. Um, all right, so that's how she, let's look at her um, photo uh, portraits. So she has one big one, and look at how she did her, um, do you all see her, her, her uh, copyright? Very subtle. Edin's photography. And then what does she have? She has her portraits. You see, this is going to be something you're going to be building on and building on and building. Her, hers is, she has a lot more pictures than she did when she graduated. She's been adding to this. Okay. And her widgets, she doesn't have many widgets. She has categories. She has follow me on my um, email. She has her Facebook like. Uh, military homecomings. She has her video. Doc, this is her documentary. Where she? Uh, do you all have to do videos in your documentary? Yeah. Well, this is the one she did for her class. This was her documentary class. So you get the idea. And her documentary portfolio. OK, so looking at Rachel's, I think you're getting an idea of you know, hers is very different. than, And, and everybody's is very different. I can, um, I, I better just go back to, uh, just better go back to, I see when you go to Shannon's, hers is very different. She still uses hers. So she has artist statement and resume. See how she did her re artist statement and resume? See that? And the resume. Career objective. She's got it all there, resume, it's all there. See, as you can see, she's been posted. She does a lot of, she, this thing stays very caught up. But she's got documentary. She did a barber shop. And she's got, let's look at her commercial. Let's look at her portraits. So as you can see, everybody does it differently, okay? But that's okay. Commercial. Mm. Okay. 
And then you've got your like and your Facebook and your Twitter and your all that stuff. Okay. All right. So hopefully this presentation has given you some insight into um, creating the blog. And let me just say a few words about the self-promotional. Okay. Uh, essentially, the self-promotional will be very similar to the blog. You'll just be creating a column, a column in uh, InDesign, or you could do it in Photoshop if you want to. Um, Where did I put that? Self promotional. Sorry, gang. I'm looking for. Uh, oh, there we go. All right. So here's your. Again, this is all on the blog. Steps for creating and designing your self promotional uh, brochures and blogs. So everything that you're going to do for the blog, you're going to do for the other two, right? You're not going to be reinventing the wheel. Create a folder on your desktop. Call it self-promo. Organize all your files into subfolders. Commercial, photojournalism, portfolio, fine art. But here's the difference. Here's the difference. Your, your, your brochure, as you learned in class about offset lithography, can't be 72 DPI. Your images will break up if you print it. So you got to have your the high-res images for your brochure, okay? So you can use 250 to 300 DPI, PPI on your brochure images. So just have an awareness that one's going to the web, one's going to the brochure. Scott's going to have you printing in the summer. You're going to have to print. What do you print at? 300, right? So... Just be aware. And that's where workflow comes in, right? Good workflow. You know this image is for this, this image is for that. Create an a, a InDesign or Photoshop document, four pages, and name it um, Jerry Self Promo, for example. Once you have placed the very best images you have shot over the past two years into the folders, Go back into InDesign or the Photoshop document and create the headers. So each column would be what? You'd have a column for commercial, a column for documentary, a column for artist statement. We're going to write the artist statement in class as part of, the, part of the graphics class. When I say artist statement, it doesn't have to be an artist statement. For Jessica, it might very well be an artist statement. For Jerry, it might be a career statement more about photo career than art. See, so you have either or. You can do a blended statement, which is a little bit about art, a little bit about career. It can be all about art, or it can be all about career. And I've got a bunch of examples for you. Uh, once your artist statement is revised and edited, place it on the front page of your brochure and on your web blog. You decide how many columns you want. But you want to have captions like high key fashion, character study, right? Indoor product, outdoor product, documentary, uh, whatever. Add a header. Uh, so you're going to have headers for these different categories, just like the blog. Add a header for shows, awards, exhibits, and publications if you've been in any shows. So follow this. Use your visual hierarchy, your focal points, and your leading lines, like we talked about. And essentially, the next uh, five weeks is just going to be work, just working towards getting this done and posting some um, status reports about where you are. All right. Pretty much, we're almost done with the structured part of the class. 
So what do you, and here, for example, we're in uh, module 11. What do you have to do for module 11? You have to write an artist statement draft. You have to write a rough draft of an artist statement. I'm going to, I thought I already posted some examples. If I didn't, the, there will be examples in there by tomorrow. I thought I put them in. Um, oh, but let's look at the self-promotional. You can download these. So here's a self-promotional. Do you all remember Ira? Yeah. Do you remember Ira? This was his self-promotional. And he's got all of his services. This is his brochure. Price list, biography, logo, very clean. Let's look at the next one. This was Rachel's. Fine art, artist statement. Oh, there's artist statements on these brochures you can look at. But look, everybody, this is a great example. Look, see that? Documentary, portraits, commercial. You see that? And under each one, the captions. Outdoor product, indoor product, fashion, child portrait, traditional, environmental, family, character study. This one's taking a while. All right, this was, was kind of funky. Look how different hers is. Portfolio one, career statement, photography by Carrie Reed. This one's still downloading. So again, very different than the other ones. Commercial documentary portrait. All right, so uh, it's not going to be that difficult because basically the images are going to be the same. It's just two different environments, the, the cell promo and the web. The web does not have to be finished at the end of the semester, but you have to have, for example, the commercial page should be done. Why? Because you're done with the commercial class. The documentary page should be done. Why? Because your documentary class should be done. Whereas the fine art is not going to be done. You might not have all your action shots. You might not have enough digital imagery that you're happy with. Um, so travel, pictures, whatever. So it's going to be as far along as we can possibly get it within the time constraints and what you're doing in the class now. Okay, so what do I need you to do between now and April 2nd, April 3rd? I need you to post your rough drafts of your artist slash career statements to this discussion board. And I will, inside that board, I'm going to put in some examples. I thought I had done that. Uh, but there are examples on the promote, on the self promos you can look at. But, you know, where do you see you're going with this? Jessica, where are you going with your art? Where are you going with your photography? Jerry, where do you see yourself going with it? All right, that's what, oh, that's really, that and setting up your, your getting your themes, your templates, that's what you got to do between now and the third. Getting your web website, the skeleton put together and picking the theme and maybe getting a banner up there. All right, then. Also, I have web tutorials for beginners, how to create a WordPress blog, tips for WordPress beginners, pages versus posts, lots of tutorials there. Then, between the 4th and the 10th, you've got one more lecture overview left, and that's it. Final lecture, overview, web design, 400 words, post a link of your photo blog in progress, and a overview of the lecture and these uh, photo blogging tips, photo blogging 101, 
seven tips for photo blogging and designing a web page. Okay, then you post your your overview like you guys have been doing all along. Lastly, between the 10th and the 1st, this is where it's going to be up to you. Don't procrastinate. Procrastination will come back to haunt you because when you rush things at the end, you don't do your best work. So you will have to post twice between April 10th and May 1st, two status reports. Patrick, this is where I'm at. I've got this much done on my blog. Here's a link. Tell me what you think. And here I am. This is where I'm at with my self-promotional. All I got left to do now is get the documentary in there and fine-tune my, um, my artist statement. Okay? And then by May 3rd, you have to submit the PDF of your final self-promotional brochure and post a link to your blog. That's your final exam. Link to the blog and self-promotional brochure is the is your final. That's it. It's project final. That's all you got to do. So I know that was a lot of information. It's all been recorded on um, YouTube, which I will uh, upload uh, this afternoon right to the Moodle. And you've got all of those resources available to you. Uh, to help you in um, accomplishing the goals and objectives of uh, this graphics class and preparing yourselves for Portfolio 2.